You're tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. We are sharing local news and resources, focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. My goal with this show is to help provide a narrative for how individuals, organizations, communities, and cultural groups around Yolo County are weathering the COVID-19 pandemic. I believe the more we can share diverse perspectives and solid local information, the better prepared we are to create community that's based on understanding and inclusion. Since March, we've recorded 30 episodes, and today marks interview number 50. I want to say thank you to all who have participated and listened. I did an informal poll on my Facebook page last week and received a ton of feedback, much of which skewed towards the desire to hear more from everyday people about their experiences during this time. So I'll be doing my best to bring those ideas forward in future interviews, as well as continuing to speak with local leaders who share important information about our institutions, schools, and businesses. And I'll remind you, you can listen to this or any KDRT show anytime online at kdrt.org. Today, we'll check in with our neighbors in West Sacramento via a conversation with West Sacramento City Council member Martha Guerrero, and then we'll speak with Sarah Marsh Crowder, who is the literary manager and company dramaturg for Bike City Theater Company here in Davis. So last week, the number of confirmed COVID-19 infections passed 15 million globally with around 650,000 deaths. Lockdowns are easing in many countries, leading some people to assume that the pandemic is ending. But really, the pandemic is not playing out in the same way from place to place. Countries such as China, New Zealand, and Rwanda have reached a low level of cases after lockdowns of varying lengths and are able to ease restrictions while watching for flare-ups. But elsewhere, such as here in the United States and in Brazil, cases are rising fast after governments lifted lockdowns quickly or never activated them nationwide. And I think that's really our problem here. Right here at home, Dr. Sonia Angel, the former head of California's public health department, resigned late Sunday, days after officials revealed a backlog of hundreds of thousands of coronavirus records that Governor Gavin Newsom said were never reported to his administration. And that news broke yesterday. Last week, California Health and Human Services Secretary Dr. Marth Ghali disclosed that as many as 300,000 records hadn't been processed, leaving county health officials with critical gaps in data on the virus's transmission. Ghali attributed the problem to a computer server outage late last month and a failure to renew a certificate for Quest Diagnostics, a commercial lab that tests for coronavirus. Newsom has ordered a full investigation into the incident. In related news, Yolo County posted 75 new cases yesterday, and I do believe that is related to the backlog, bringing the county's total cases to 1,834. YoloCounty.org remains your site for all county-related public health info and for general questions about COVID-19. And the county offers a COVID-19 Response Operations Center line for those general questions, and the number is 833-965-6268. And finally, if COVID-19 has you feeling stressed, anxious, or lonely, the CalHOPE Warm Line has free resources to manage stress and a call line to talk about your struggles. And the number is 833-317-317. 4673. It is free and confidential. And let's take a moment for music and we will be right back with our first interview. Okay, Martha Guerrero was elected to the West Sacramento City Council in 2018 after having previously served on the city's planning commission for a number of years. And she is running for mayor in the current election cycle. As Los Angeles's county legislative representative in Sacramento, she's dedicated over 19 public 19 years to public service, covering legislative strategy and advocacy, public administration, strategic planning, and legislative and budget analysis. Also a licensed clinical social worker, if you can believe that, Martha has received a commendation 
from the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors for her le legislative leadership and dedication to foster children. And I reached out to her because she's also been a leading source for information about West Sacramento on the COVID-19 YOLO Response Facebook page. Welcome, Martha. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me today. So West Sacramento is an incredibly... Uh, multicultural, d diverse community. It's a hub for food production. It's a gateway to the Delta. It's really different than all the other communities in, in Yolo County in many ways. And like other areas in the county, it's been dealing with a surge in COVID cases with 26 new cases reported just yesterday. So I'm hoping today that we'll be able to hear about what some of the particular challenges are in your community, and then we can talk about the ways that the community is rising to meet those. Thank you. Okay. And yes, we have been um, experiencing an increased caseload of uh, COVID cases, and I think it's also due to the ability to do more testing mm -hmm. um, in our city. And we're continuing to increase testing as we move forward so that we can capture who are COVID positive and um, make sure that they are isolating themselves, um, trying to get the testing results back sooner. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm working with our Sacramento Metro Chamber uh, partners to provide PPE to our businesses so that they can pass them out to their customers. Right. I, I saw you had posted a picture of um, a, a delivery of PPE to frontline workers at a grocery store there. So. Yes, our Kiagas is uh, one of our, um, ma mainly served by Latino community, mm -hmm. and that's where our biggest surge, we're experiencing uh, an increase of the Latino community who are providing support for those um, out of, you know, in the grocery stores, mm -hmm. they clean our hospitals and our businesses, uh, and, and they come home and they have um, you know, families where they um live in small environments, and, right. and they also want to take care of their elders, so, so they go in and visit with them, teaching them what they can do to prevent the spread, educating them on how it happens quickly mm -hmm. if they're not wearing a mask, and um, providing them with the PPE so they can continue to use it and not have to hold on to it. We've been seeing that they're trying to scrub them clean and reuse them where we're thinking, yeah, you know, that's not a good idea, right. toss those and use a new one. Right. And so that uh, teaching the farm workers as well what their um, rights are if they feel sick um, to let their employer know that they're not feeling well and they might have come in contact with somebody who's COVID positive so they mm -hmm. can stay home and not contaminate their um, fellow workers. Yeah, it's so important to get that communicated in, in multiple languages. And, you know, I know West Sacramento has a, a fairly large uh, Hmong population, a fairly large Russian population. As I said, it is a very, very diverse community. So what else are you hearing from your constituents about the, the kinds of help uh, that's needed right now? I'm hearing concerns from uh, individuals who are going to businesses with people are not wearing masks. Mm -hmm. and their concern is... Uh, catching it. Um, so trying to educate uh, the businesses to uh, enforce the use of masks and also have them on hand. And there's some businesses who are ahead of the game who are actually have door greeters such as um, uh, the Nugget and um, Target and mm -hmm. Walmart has done a lot of improving in that area. And um, handing out a mask if somebody's not coming in with the appropriate protection. Right. Um, and trying to enforce that even while they're in the store so people will go in and take it off and not want to use it. But just continuing to enforce the use of masks and um, cleaning their hands and uh, sanitizing all the public um, you know, things that people are using, whether it be at the cash register, the um, shopping carts, and other things that people are coming in contact with frequently. Mm -hmm. Restaurants trying to enforce uh, making sure that there's no indoor seating. And if somebody comes indoors, it's going to be to go and pick up your food and then leave. But uh, outdoor seating is permitted. Mm -hmm. And we haven't um, seen a, a, a case where an outdoor seating has affected um, infected other people. It could be an employee who comes back from a family or an event where they, they do come in contaminated. So um, our businesses are very good at closing immediately if they find out that one of their employees um, did come in sick and then they try to decontaminate the um, site. And uh, that's 
an area I think that our businesses are very good at. Mm-hmm. Thank you for bringing mm-hmm. bread. Let's talk about uh, food scarcity for a moment, because another thing you have shared, I know you've been working with Yellow Food Bank during this time to help make sure that food gets to uh, citizens in West Sacramento who need it. So how how is that uh, playing out? How many more people do you, do you know are getting delivery in West Sacramento, and, and how have you been a part of that? We have had to... Um bolster enhanced food bank and meals on wheels um, support because mm-hmm. we've uh, initially had through a yellow food bank home delivered meals so they scaled back and i'm um, working with the county uh, initially we had the great plates program that uh, yes. the state rolled out and i i tried to get the city involved uh they said that the workload um the administrative requirements were excessive um and so i reached out to yolo county and they did participate so that gave us the the uh, infrastructure so that we can do something new beyond the Great Plates program, which expired. Mm-hmm. And um, with the coronavirus relief funding, we've enhanced access um, to uh, in-home meals for our most vulnerable populations and even those that are COVID positive okay. um, through our Meals and Wheels program. And Yolo Food Bank has increased um, to two additional sites uh, in, in the local church um, and in, um, in another area here, the Children's Alliance. Uh, a program here yeah. in the Broderick and Bright area. And so we have about four distribution sites now weekly where initially we used to have St. Vincent de Paul mm-hmm. and uh, Trinity and our um, uh, Mercy Coalition who would do daily um, meals to our uh, population who are homeless. And so that, that they scaled back because right. they're retirees. Right. And um, so Yolo Food Bank has stepped up tremendously. They, they have. They have done yeah. yeoman's work during this pandemic. Um, exactly. Because you mentioned the homeless, let's talk for a minute about Project Room Key. And, and for listeners, that's the program Governor Newsom launched at the start of the pandemic um, where the state has secured thousands of isolation rooms in hotels and motels for uh, basically extremely vulnerable individuals experiencing homelessness. And all that was done to help flatten the curve and, of course, preserve hospital capacity. But what I wanted to say, Martha, is for anyone who's been around for a while, for years there was a giant billboard on I-80 West between <laughs> West Sac and Davis that advertised thousands of motel rooms in West Sacramento. Um, it's since been changed, but that memory tells me that West Sacramento has had a real role to play here. So could you speak to that program and its importance for uh, local jurisdictions? Yes, it has been uh, a benefit to have. Um, we had had our billboard of 10,000 motel rooms and all focused on West Capitol Avenue. Yeah. And um, the, the motels did step up and offer the motel use so that we can have uh, our unsheltered guests come in and provide shelter in, to prevent the spread of COVID out on, on the streets. And so we had uh, above 100 um, people who are participating. Since then, we've gone down to about 70, and it's because we found housing, permanent housing Mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So to provide stability for someone who is, you know, most of them have some level of challenges, um, whether they have a history of of, um, rental evictions or uh, just not being able to cover the first and last month's rent, um, not having the financial um, support, being able to stab- stabilize their medical needs so they can get on um, Social Security insurance, mm-hmm. and you need to have a medical history in order to qualify for that, and uh, just providing the additional resources and support so that they can become stable and a little bit healthier in order to be able to find housing and support. So all of that has been done through Project Green Key, and I've been advocating um, with the Homeless Co- Coalition for it to become Project Home Key, which West Sacramento is um, is, is aggressively pursuing mm-hmm. to be a recipient of, um, we're looking at between $2 million to $6 million in funding for about two to four motels. Hmm. Very interesting development there. Yeah, because, we, you know, you have a pandemic on top of homelessness, on top of food scarcity. You're just basically layering one one problem on top of another. So it's been it's been quite a time. Before we run out of time, I uh, when we were chatting back and forth before this interview, I mentioned that 
I've really come to be aware of West Sacramento as kind of a food hub. And I'm, I'm thinking here of Dollar General's recent announcement that it's it's moving its all its cold storage facility to West Sacramento. So West Sacramento has a lot going on in that area. What does that mean or how does it impact those types of businesses struggling to stay open and, and how might it inform economic recovery in West Sacramento? Well, I'm very grateful that Dollar General is coming um, in and, you know, providing an additional uh, opportunity for people to be employed mm -hmm. and um, looking forward to seeing what we can do to provide the additional support um, for them so that they can sustain their business and doing that for all of our businesses. And um, some of the ways we can do that through programs um, and providing uh, subsidized employment if they're financially struggling. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, the CalWORK uh, program, which provides uh, for individuals who have our family members, um, parents, mom or dad, and we can subsidize in those, that employment. Uh, we can provide internships uh, through our home run program. Um, and Workforce um, Investment Act has additional subsidized employment jobs for some people who are on, on the cusp of, you know, homelessness, and yet they, mm -hmm. they lack some of the skills, but we can teach them the skills, and we have an employer ready. And I think that how bridging those resources together and working with the chamber to ensure that they have um, the additional funding that they need, either federal funding or relief um, in whatever way we can provide economic relief through mm -hmm. some subsidized grant here in West Sacramento. And the coronavirus relief funds have provided the flexibility for us to use that funding right. to support our businesses. So that, that would be my goal. The, this is going to inform every community's work for years to come. There, there's just no way around that. We're going to be feeling this impact for a long time. Martha, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. How can people get more information about you if they are curious? Well, thank you, Adam. You can reach me at um, www.marthaguerrero.com, and um, all my contact information is in there. So you can look my look at my background and then also um, send me an email if you have any questions. Great. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy se schedule to let us know how the folks in West Sacramento are faring. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. You too. All right. We're going to be back with our second interview in just a moment. And I want to say that this lovely person was scheduled last week. We had some technical difficulties, so we are going to get her on today. We'll be back in just a moment. We have some some weird mystical uh, obstacle between Miss Sarah and, and myself. 